Okay, so there's a number of ways that we can think about reducing our dependence on antelmintics. Number one we've looked at, which is faecal egg counting, and actually using that to perhaps determine whether or not we need to drench. Um, just because a lamb has got a dirty bottom doesn't mean to say that it's necessarily worms. So we need to be a little bit careful um, and use the monitoring to help inform. And the other thing about that is that, you know, if you're just simply going in and drenching at regular intervals all the all all season, the chances are that you're probably a drenching unnecessarily and B you may well be missing the time when you really do need to drench in between those so you could be losing out on both counts. Using grazing, mixed grazing with cattle, alternating grazing with cattle is a really good way of reducing the challenge and reducing the need for us to use antelmintics. Cattle and sheep worms aren't the same and they will effectively reduce the worm population down when they're grazing pasture for the other species. Um, some people would perhaps graze cattle and sheep together. That will reduce the worm burden but it doesn't help your grazing management because obviously cattle and sheep graze very differently so it's not the best from a sward management point of view. Other things that we can do is to think about as we have here a pen of mature ewes. These are actually quite old ladies now. Um, they will have a very very good immune response to worms and what happens with those ladies is most of the year they're going to be taking in worms, they'll graze worms off the pasture, but then they have the immune system which does two wonderful things. A, it stops a lot of those worms actually developing into adults in the gut. It effectively ejects them out in the dung without them being able to mature and secondly the very few worms that it does allow to get in the gut and develop, it regulates them and doesn't allow them to produce very many eggs. So in effect, these don't hardly ever need drenching. We might drench them around lambing time to stop some contamination, but they certainly don't need drenching at other times of year in most situations. In fact, they're actually quite useful in the back end of the year as worm hoovers, just as they are. Because as we said, they'll take worms in off the pasture and effectively kill a lot of them. So if you've got pastures that you've had lambs on all the way through the first half of the season and you want to just try and reduce that level of contamination, grazing dry ewes on those will actually reduce that down and reduce the number of worms going into the winter and through to the following year. We can also do things like um, avoid the problem. So one of the things for me that would drive weaning date for lambs is if you've got lambs on a highly contaminated pasture, your faecal egg counts have been telling you that the lots and lots of eggs are dropping on that pasture, um, then you would want to move young lambs from that situation as quickly as, as was practical. So you might bring your weaning date forward and move them onto some pasture that you might have had some silage off um, or maybe had had cattle on in the first part of the season. So you know so using weaning is a useful management tool as well. Um, and other things that are around um, bioactive crops, there are some crops, chicory for example is one of them, um, that have antelmintic properties and can reduce the, uh, the worm burden. And probably the one that's going to be the longest term, but one to keep your eye out for, is that people are now beginning to breed sheep which are more resistant um, and, or, and or resilient to worms um, and the idea of that being that the resilient ones can tolerate much higher burdens, the resistant ones produce fewer eggs. So in time we may find that the genetics of the sheep themselves actually help us to, uh, to reduce our um, dependence on antimintics.